Hello, I'm Eileen Roach and happy Halloween. We are going to have some fun today talking about the humble bobbin. I know it doesn't sound very exciting, but you know, it's a pretty important key to successful embroidery. It's uh, an ingredient that you want to make sure you have the right type in your machine. And there's a lot to learn. And we're going to have an expert join us. In fact, she's in costume too. So come on in, Deborah Jones. Hey, Deborah. Hello. Hi. So good to be here with you, Eileen. It's always great to have Deborah in the house. And we do, we're kind of twinsos today <laughs> with our fun capes and fun hat wear, right? It's just great to, uh, you know, celebrate the holiday, right? You bet. And, yeah. you know, this is probably my costume for the year. Yeah, this is party central here, <laughs> right? After this, <laughs> that's it. So maybe answer the door for some trick-or-treaters. Will yeah, you get yeah. some in your you house? Oh, sure. Yeah. Good. Me too in my neighborhood. Looking forward to it. Well, we hope that you will uh, type in in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. And if you have any fellow embroiderers who want to learn about bobbin, bobbins or you think it would be good knowledge to share with them, tag them and share this uh, broadcast with them so they can join in the fun. So let's talk about the humble bob bobbin. The things that we're going to talk about are the bobbin sizes, the thread types, pre-wound or wind your own, and then keeping that thread bob bobbin thread on the bottom where it belongs, right? It, that's right, because, you know, I don't know about you, Eileen, but there's been quite a few times mine has come up to the top, and that's one of the reasons I like to educate myself about bobbins. Absolutely. And sometimes it's the last thing that you consider when you're having a problem with an embroidery design. We often fuss with tension or maybe change needles, that kind of thing. But it's, uh, the bobbin's pretty important. Yes. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's one of those things that, you know, if you're winding your own, you know, when you're in the middle of a project and you run out, that can be a little frustrating. Absolutely. Especially, well, if you're quilting and you're in a big hoop and you're in the middle of the quilt, ah, right. that's always a nightmare, right? Right. Yeah. Thanks for your nice comments about the fun costumes and uh, welcome to Mary in Little Elm. That's oh. like in our neighborhood. And we also have somebody watching from McKinney, which is uh, just a little north of us also. And of course, uh, Judy Warren's in Hawaii. Oh, man. Yeah. Hi, Judy. Hi, Judy. We all love that. There's Sue S. Brown from um, Canada. That's awesome. And all the way from Alabama by way of Louisiana. <laughs> and let's see. St Stephanie Hardy says, we all like playing Bob and Chicken. Where did that go? <laughs> you know, Sue Brown, she d she does that on OML. Mm. She often talks about Bob and, uh, Bob and Chicken. Are you... Are you going to be able to make it all the way through the design with that last bit of thread in the bobbin case? And well, we don't like to waste. Yeah. And that's one reason for playing bobbin chicken. But on the other hand, you know, I do a lot of those embroider buddies and it's kind of like a quilt. You don't yeah. want to have to stop in the, middle of, in the middle of that. Too. Yeah, you really don't for sure. So what do you say? Should we go ahead and get started on some of the particulars about the bobbins? Let's do it. Okay, go ahead, Deborah. Well, you know, bobbins come uh, in, in our uh, types of machines in two primary sizes. Mm -hmm. You've got your L's that are used in the cylinder arm type machines. That would be the single needles or the multi needles. Um, and you can actually use them in uh, the tabletop type machines if you have that little button adapter mm. we'll look at in a few minutes. Yeah. And But style A is the most common uh, that we use. It's also called class 15. And that's what many of our tabletop machines mm. use. Not all. Right. You know, I have to tell you, I kind of have a pet peeve when they give two names to the same thing, like Style A and Class 15. Really? Can we just stick with one? <laughs> it's kind of like the needle names, yeah. 7511, yeah. you know? Okay. I don't quite <laughs> but... get it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the different types of bobbins. So, well, you had a really great analogy, Deborah, and that is that a nickel and a quarter can help you identify bobbins at a glance. Right. And, you know, the nickel mm -hmm. is about the, diam about the diameter of the uh, A's and the L's. Right. The main difference, though, in those is the, the thickness. The height. Yeah, yeah so the let's height. Let's take a look at that. So the white bobbin here is the L. Yes. 
and the black is the A. And you can clearly see the difference in the height of those bobbins. And of course, if you were to put an A, the black one, the, the thicker one, into the bobbin case for those cylinder machines, you know, it doesn't, it's not flush fit. Right. It would be ex That's why you out. need that adapter to lift it, you yeah. know. So mm -hmm. there is the little button looking adapter that will lift that L to the mm -hmm. same height as an A, That's which, right. which is something you might do if, if you needed a specific bobbin type that only came in an L or yes. thread type. Yeah. So let's take a look at that bobbin case. So this is for a single needle flatbed, and this is actually from a baby lock and brother machine, right? Uh, yes. And notice it has that green paint on the screw and that tells you embroidery. Yes. That's right. an embroidery bobbin assembly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you could use the A in there, which is what you're supposed to. And you can see when you drop that in there, it's nice and flush. I'm just going to turn it on its side. But if you have pre-wounds that are A's, you can drop in that L's. little L's. Right. You can drop in that adapter. Right. And then place the skinnier bobbin. Yeah. the L in and it will fit the same. So that's, you know, if you're wondering what that little post is in your kit that came with your machine, that's what it's for. And, and, you know, I've used it many times myself, mm -hmm. Eileen, and I, I don't, you know, uh, know that there's anything, you know, that, any negative to that, but nowadays I just use the A's. Right. Well, I do too. Yeah. So let's go, but before, you know, pre-rounds weren't really that available in the A's. Right. So, so let's take a look at these sides. So he, these all have plastic sides. This says uh, paper. And by the way, while you're pointing at that M, uh -huh. you know, people may wonder, why are we showing an M? Who uses an M? But, you know, long arm quilting machines do. And also the Janome multi-needle models mm, use it. This is the so, so that's an oversized bobbin. Uh, you know, it has more yards. Right. Uh, so it's but it's a... Um, it's a it's a unique bobbin in the in the bobbin world. So there's not a lot of machines that use it, but it it is yeah. used by those long arms as and well. And it's almost double the 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 amount of thread. There's 240 yards of this yeah. spun poly on yeah, there, which that's is wild. That, so you know you're gonna play bobbin chicken for a long time <laughs> before you run right, out of that. Right. Yeah. Okay, now this one is pretty funky. This doesn't have anything on its sides, neither plastic or paper. And it has a dark core on this side and a plastic white core on the other side. So tell us about that, Deborah. Well, that is our magnet core style L. Mm -hmm. And that is a great bobbin if you have a multi-needle or any cylinder arm machine, the single needle, multi-needle. And it go, has fits in a bobbin case like like we're looking at now, the removable bobbin case. You know, we don't remove that black bobbin case from our single needles right. to tabletops. But we take this one out and we mm -hmm. can easily oh, oh, left, flip upside it over. down, right? <laughs> so that yeah. magnet core is designed to sit next to the metal yeah. and regulate the spin. See, and it doesn't fall out. Is that cool? That's, yeah. that's, it, a, that great, really that's cool. a great way to show it. Yeah. And, the, and the wonderful... Uh, property that it has mm -hmm. is that that magnet controls the spin mm -hmm. of the bobbin, giving a very uniform performance right to the last inch. It's and boy, great. when you play bobbin chicken with a magnetic <laughs> core, baby, when I, it, there is literally nothing left on this bobbin. That's exactly when right. When your sensor and goes off. And your tension never changes. Yes. You know, on one phenomenon that some of you watching may have experienced is that when you get toward the end of a bobbin, your bobbin tension gets looser. Right, right. For but sure. not with the magnetic. So. Not with the magnetic. So let's pull that off. Uh, and for, but you guys that are saying, man, I want that. Well, it's only <laughs> for those <laughs> cylinder arm machines. And the reason for that is because of the direction that it is wound. Yes, that's right. right. Mm -hmm. So that's why you can't yeah, you fudge wouldn't, with that. Because if you put it in a single needle tabletop, mm -hmm. you would have to put the plastic side down, not right. the magnet. Right. Yes, absolutely. Well, see, while we're here, why don't we talk a little bit about how you clean a bobbin case? Good idea. So 
I like to use a pipe cleaner that I have folded over and kind of rounded that edge because, you know, there is a wire inside that <laughs> pipe cleaner and you don't want to scratch your bobbin case because believe me, I'm good at doing that with the needle. And then I just, you know, rub that pipe cleaner inside and, you know, make sure I get all that dust off the exterior. You can also give it a little brush on the bottom because lint builds up everywhere. Right. right. And depending on what you're embroidering, lint buildup can happen very quickly. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Now on the cylinder bobbing case, I understand that um, air, you know, blow off is, is a good way to clean it. Right. Yes, absolutely. It cleans mm -hmm. that, that interior. But Eileen, what do you use to clean under that tension plate? Yeah. So that tension, oh, excuse me, folks, my, my costume's getting in my way. Anyway, so, uh, you know, this is our centering ruler and all of our rulers are made of this flexible plastic and it is the perfect weight to slip it into that, what do you call this, a spring, Deborah? Yeah, some people call it a spring. Uh -huh. I call it a tension plate. Yeah, and so then I just slip it inside there and you know give it a little click, pulling out the, the ruler, and that releases any built up lint that's inside. And that can be a culprit, that lint holding that plate up can mm -hmm. be a culprit for your tension being too loose. Absolutely. And and the other thing that's great about your technique mm -hmm. there, Eileen, is that you're not using a little metal screwdriver that could scratch your bottom right. case right. and you're not blowing on it that could deposit saliva. Yes. And you know, I, I believe our manual say you could use a credit card, you know, to lift that. But I personally think they're a little too, too thick. thick. Just yeah. a little too yeah. thick. Your ruler idea is great. Yeah. I know, I really like that. And um, what a thing I have learned often when I get a, a, a message on my brother 10 needle, it'll say, you know, check Bob and, and so forth. And it's often because there's just a little bit of lint there. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So check that first before you go to all other kind of shenanigans trying to figure <laughs> out what's wrong, right? Right. Okay. So let's go back to PowerPoint and see what's next. Oh yeah, this is always an important um, feature is the bobbins, winding your own, right? Right. And you know, when do you want to do that? I mean, it's a matter of uh, what project you're working on, right Eileen? Yeah, absolutely. So you can see here, I have sewing thread on, on uh, some bobbins. I have, you know, the tail end of embroidery bobbin thread. I have 40 weight exquisite thread that I was probably doing earrings with. And then of course I even have our vintage thread, those matte threads uh, that I was doing other kinds of work that it was important that the back of the embroidery work matched the top. And, you know, I, I always kind of hold on to those empty spools because it always seems you don't have an empty spool when you really need it. Right, right, yeah. right. And, you know, the there's various reasons, aesthetic reasons, that you would want to match. Right, absolutely. So, you know, invest in one of these bobbin rings. And, you know, I think our friends at Schmitz Needles makes these. And um, they're, they're just so handy to keep all of your bobbins tidy. And I know there's lots of different storage ideas for that, but that's my go-to. I like that. Let's see. Yeah. Um, okay. Some of you, oh, with Reetha, I'm sorry that your machines are at the doctor. Yeah, that that's a bummer. Oh, man. That's really a bummer. Yeah. They're, you know, there's not much we can say about that. Just, you know, we, we share your pain. That's right. And yeah. hopefully, you know, your dealer's not too mm -hmm. backed up. Right. And then here's Joanne Banco. It's always nice to have her in the house. Absolutely. Yeah. Hi, Joanne. Yeah, it's good to see you, Joanne. Let's see. And oh, well, there was a comment earlier that Sybil said, I love this. She said, when we were talking about the post, the adapter, mm -hmm. it's great to use that when you buy the wrong type of bobbin and, you know, <laughs> then you don't have to toss well, them. Well, that's so. a good point, you know, yeah. because at least if you buy the, if you need an L, you can have an option. If you bought an A and you needed an L. Eh. <laughs> yeah. And oh, here's Angel Corbett. She wants to know what's the perfect tension. We're going to get to that in a minute. We have a slide on that. I'm not sure. And some that's... stitched examples. Yeah, we do. In fact, that's coming up. So here you go. Talk about that. Right. So, so if you stitch a satin stitch that's at least one inch tall. So a lot of times we might use a block 
letter I from your machine or from your uh, software. It doesn't matter. Uh, block letter I. Actually, <laughs> I like to do the word Fox because that causes the machine to move in every direction it's ever going to, uh, vertically, horizontally, and in that circle for the O. So if you if you stitch the word fox, you should see a third bobbin thread right down the center of the embroidery and a third of the colored thread or top thread on each side. That's ideal tension. Now, uh, when we say ideal, that doesn't mean that it has to be that textbook yeah. tension all the time. Right, Eileen? Right. I mean, there are, but you, you're going to find if you get your um, tension set properly, almost, you know, it's always going to come out like that. You can see here on the T, it's a little off center. I don't really know why, but look at that Y. It is perfectly centered within that satin right. and the S. And, and so the letter Fox is a great one to mm -hmm. stitch, you know, because you get the straight lines, hard, you know, vertical, horizontal, circles, right. diagonal, just like you already said. Blah, yeah, blah, blah. All of those. And yeah. those are that's a beautiful example, Eileen. Mm -hmm. But just it also shows that your letter has to be large enough to yeah. or your your stitch has to be wide enough to right. show that. Now here last week I showed this beautiful pumpkin that's from our friends over at Embroidery Library. And this was our King Star Fall Pack. And you know, beautiful satins on the front, right? And look at those running stitches, just gorgeous. Nothing but King Star Metallic on top. That's all you're seeing. Uh, when you flip it over, right? This is not a reversible project for sure. So here you can see where that bobbin thread is centered in the satin. And of course, on the back, you're seeing a lot of King Star on those run stitches. Right, on the run stitches for sure. But mm -hmm. you know, all we try to do on run stitches is have them just so they don't loop on top. You yep. want them to pull down right. enough so that they that you avoid that looping on top. But yeah. but that would be correct tension on a run stitch. But your examples are right on. Yeah, and here's um. So here we'll show you the other side. This was our exquisite fall uh, quartet. Had those beautiful four colors, and then I believe that this uh, cross hatching is a king star. And you know it's ugly on the back, no doubt about it. You're going to have some thread buildup where it is, uh, you know, changing direction and so forth, or you're just having build up. Or it's tie-offs. Yeah, tie-offs. So accept that. It's embroidery. That's, That's just right. how it is, right? That's exactly yeah. right, mm -hmm. Eileen. And, and you know, uh, the tensions uh, are something that if you're on the type of bobbin uh, case that we showed from a cylinder arm, they're relatively easy to adjust. Yeah. But, you know, you can also adjust those removable bobbin cases that you showed mm -hmm. us like in, from the tabletop. Right. And, you can. Yes. And, and mm -hmm. but that is going to be beyond the comfort level of some. Yeah, so but but they are adjustable. Yeah. Okay, so Sue Brown had an uh, interesting question, and I'm going to, you know, let you answer this. People always ask if you can reuse the plastic bobbin pre-wound. Well, we call uh, we call ours single use, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, where what you're risking with any of the reusing any of the plastic bobbins that aren't specifically made to be reused is that they can that pop that top can pop, pop off, off during the mm -hmm. embroidery process and you wouldn't want that. So, so it's best to only reuse bobbins that are intended to be mm -hmm. reused. And if you take a look at an empty single use plastic bobbin and one that's intended for multiple uses, the rigidity of the plastic is very different. You know, the, yes. it's much sturdier right. than the one that's intended to be used over and over. So keep that in mind. Also, in a pinch, if you have to use that single use, say you just want to wind a couple yards, believe me, I've been there. So um, always make sure there's no burrs on mm. that bobbin case. I mean, not the bobbin case, well, also the bobbin case, but the bobbin itself. Right. And you know, that's, that happens more than you think. They, it gets struck, uh, glanced off by yeah. a needle. You can sand it off. Yeah. You can finger not, fingernail mm -hmm. file, right. you know, something soft, just use that. Yeah. Okay, what, what happens next, Deborah? <laughs> Let's see. 
So yeah, the pre-wounds that you can purchase, some have paper sides, some have plastic sides. And as we just showed you, some have no sides, which would be yeah. the magnetic core. But here's some interesting facts. The magnetic, uh, I mean, the uh, pre-wounds have way more yards than yeah. you could ever wind on a Bob and Eileen. So let's take a look at the different tubes that we have. These are so fun. So the first thing you should notice is it's going to tell you exactly what type of bobbin it is, plastic sided or magnetic core or plastic side. This orange tab here tells you this is for a cylinder machine, a, a multi-needle, single needle, but cylinder. So the uh, domestic flatbed machines don't have that orange tab. And clearly up here, you do have these um, size L, size A, um, clearly illustrate, you know, written out so that you know. Also, they come in different colors, right? Um, yes. Black and white. I know, black and white, so sexy, but you need that. You do. And mm -hmm. that's really for aesthetic reasons, too. It's not, Eileen, to keep from balancing your tension. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you're using black thread and you're using a black bobbin because the bobbin mm. thread's coming up to the right. top, that's not the reason we use right. it. We use it to have a pleasing look on a dark garment. Yes, absolutely. So you don't have that glare of white. And think right. if you're like embroidering a dark scarf, you know, and you, instead of changing the bobbin for, with every color change, you just use a black bobbin. It's not as uh, right. apparent. Right, and, sure. that, and, and no matter whether you're using brown or navy blue thread or what, yeah. whatever dark thread you're right. using, the black bobbin is more aesthetically pleasing. Absolutely, love that. And so it also calls out how many yards. So there's 120 yards of the 70D and there's 145 of the magnetic core. And so it all has to do with what you can fit on that bobbin, right? Right, right. And, and of course, the thread type and size mm -hmm. that's on that bobbin. So, you know, the, the thread types that you're calling out there with the 120, 145 yards, mm -hmm. That is a uh, continuous filament bobbin thread, which we're going to talk about here in a few minutes. But, okay. but the main thing is that you can't wind that many yards. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Um, Sybil says, uh, are these bobbins 60 weights? So we're definitely going to talk about the weights in a second. And let's see, uh, Joanne Banco, she likes to use the black for a lettering with micro lettering. Yes. Well, if you use our micro lettering, you don't need that, <laughs> but just saying, sorry, Joanne. <laughs> I understand why some software or machines would have you do that for sure. Yeah. Oh, look who's in the house. Oh. DG, so nice to have you hey. here. Hey, DG. And of course, DG, those of you who don't know, is a very talented digitizer. Mm -hmm. And we, we love all of your beautiful designs. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, so what's next? Let's see. Oh, and by the way, the other benefit of pre-wound, just, just so we mentioned, is that they have very consistent tension mm. because they're wound so precisely. Yes, very uh, different than our top winders. Right, right. Yeah, very so, different. you know, you get that additional yardage partly because of the consistency they're wound with. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so let's take a look at these two different fibers. So... We have this straight line is what, Deborah? That is the spun polyester, mm -hmm. and the curvy line is the yeah. continuous filament mm -hmm. polyester. So, so you, we had the question about sizes. Mm -hmm. So this curvy one is a 70 uh, slash 2, and the straight one is a 60 slash 2. Mm -hmm. So what that means is the 60 is, of course, what's recommended by Brother and Baby Lock for many, most embroidery mm -hmm. machines. Mm -hmm. And the curvy one is size 70, which is just a, a slightly bit thinner. Mm -hmm. um, thinner thread does tend to give a, a nice stitch, but mm -hmm. either one are perfect for embroidery. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I tend, but the point that I like to make mm -hmm. about the 60 weight for the spun polyester is not just that it is the 60 weight, but that fiber type is mm -hmm. so friendly. It's a little bit more cotton-like in appearance mm -hmm. yep. and it grabs better in your tension. Right. And so if you're having issues with 
bobbin thread coming up to the top mm -hmm. and you're not comfortable with adjusting your tension on mm -hmm. that on that bobbin case mm -hmm. You might love a spun poly bobbin. Right, because it just grabs that top thread a yes. little bit better than this slinky, yeah. you know, lightweight yeah. thread. They're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. it, it has more texture. Yeah, more texture. So very yeah. good. Mm -hmm. But, you know, let's take a closer look at, so these pre-wounds, look at the beautiful wind. I mean, literally. It just looks like a sheet of liquid. Yes. There's no ridges. You know, you can't see any dimension because it, it, they're wound so well. Unlike our pre-wound, our what well, we wind, you know, on our top line machine. And, you know, you do get a lot of unevenness. You get the thread that kind of, you know, goes back and forth and back and forth as it winds. Sometimes you even get a little hot mess like that, you know, right? So right. just... But, but yes, you're, Love the pre you're, you're so right. And the reason you see that mm -hmm. obvious back and forth mm -hmm. is because it's not wound with the same tension. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Um, Mary, dear, she's Drear. She loves the pre-wounds and can use most of them. Yeah, I love pre-wounds too. I don't really wind my bobbins anymore. Um, just if I have to match thread, that's it. That's mm -hmm. the only type of time I do right. that. Yeah, let's see. Oh, Reen Wilcoxon from the Embroidery Garden. She's here. She loves the tubes. I like the tubes too. They're so handy. You know, they're first off, it's visible. You can see how many you have, you know, as you run <laughs> through them. And boy, some days when you're really stitching up a storm, you can go through a lot of bobbins, right. like five or six or my sister Marie and I used to text each other about how many bobbins we went through that day. Well, but that's another good I good point when you mention that about how many uh uh, you go through, you can kind of predict it if you're using yeah. pre-wounds. That's right. Unlike so much with, mm -hmm. with the uh, one wind your own. And mm -hmm. the pre-wounds, you know, you can get 30, 40, 50,000 stitches out of depending on the stitch type. Well, obviously, a satin stitch takes more bobbin thread than a mm -hmm. fill stitch. Or, right. So, but, but really, it's not unusual to get mm -hmm. those type of stitch counts from a pre-wound. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Judy Warren wants to know, do you use the 70 weight with the micro fonts? Sure, it would go great with mm -hmm. that 60 weight top thread because, yeah. you know, it's very, very equally balanced. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, I use 70 weight a lot yeah. and I have no issue with it, even though, you know, we we say 60 weight and some of the machines actually, the embroidery only uh, certain models, uh, mm -hmm. 90 weight. But I'm just saying I use the 70 uh, very frequently yeah. and you know your manual your machine manual is going to give you a recommendation right and that's a recommendation for the best results that they have tested for it doesn't mean that if you switch a weight it's going to break your machine it just means that you may not have the results that they intended you to have but on the other hand, it may also mean that you'll have fine results. So, you know, it's worth it to experiment with weight. Sure. It's not going to harm your machine. And, and you, know, you can always check with your dealer because many dealers sell 60, 70, mm -hmm. and 90 weight. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, for many of you who have different models of machines, different brands, check each each manual, right? Right. Okay. Uh, so we didn't really talk about this extra um, bobbin case that comes in. So... You know, it come, you get normally, with Baby Lock and Brother, you often get three different bobbins. And so one has that green dot that we talked about on the screw, and that's for embroidery. So when you see that, that's for embroidery. If there is no paint on the screw, this is the bobbin case intended for sewing, correct? Mm -hmm. I believe that's correct. Yeah. And then the gray one is not in there to confuse you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's for bobbin work, where you use decorative heavyweight threads, wind them on a bobbin, and work upside down. So that's not something we're talking about today, but I just wanted you to know right. that's why. And the reason there. they give you those three different ones, in, in my understanding uh, anyway, is because you're using different weights of bobbin thread yeah. for sewing than you are for embroidery. You right. need that tighter adjustment for your embroidery threads, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I mean I would bobbins, think so. your embroidery bobbins. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay. So where are we at now? Let's see. Let's see. Oh yeah, adjusting the tension. All right. So that's on the. Yeah, you want... um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I'll let you no, point. Yeah, I'll but, point. But you know, this bobbin case 
I recommend always keeping an extra because, you know, sometimes, especially if you do finished hats mm -hmm. on your mm -hmm. multi-needle or your uh, alliance or single needle mm -hmm. cylinder arm, you need that bobbin case adjusted a little tighter because hats tend to pull the bobbin thread up. So your tension's actually different. Wow. So I See like what to, she knows. She knows everything. <laughs> I like to have a couple of different uh, bobbin cases available mm -hmm. because if you drop this and bend it, you can't stitch it all. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good, you know, because you have to keep that perfect yeah. round. So yeah. you adjust it on that larger screw that mm -hmm. Eileen's pointing to and just do about a quarter of a turn mm -hmm. at a time. And is that righty tighty? It's the same rule, righty okay. tighty. And, you know, if you get down to the bottom, them and you can't tighten it anymore, use the technique Eileen showed you. Clean out that that spring yeah, uh, because that spring. possible right that here. it's just got lint buildup in there and yeah. that's keeping you from, it's mm -hmm. holding that plate up. Yeah. So. And so when you tighten that screw, it is clamping this a little tighter. So right. just so you understand what you're doing there. That's right. And then if you have an extra bobbin case, I, if you purchase one, and let's say you're just going to use it for hats. I would get a Sharpie and I would put a dot outside here. So you always know, oh, that's my hat bobbin. Right, yeah. right. Very, very good idea. Yeah. And, and of course, um, that way you just also have a built-in spare. Yes. Now, often on these bobbin cases, um, I, I've had a tendency to have needles, you know, hit this uh, plastic part. And I have used a uh, tiny piece of very fine grade sandpaper to just remove a burr. I don't really mess on the inside. I let my dealer do that, but sometimes yes. you get a burr on the top. And, and that, that can, yeah. That can save you a service call, Eileen. Right, for sure. And there's no harm, you know, when I have to purchase a new bobbin case because I've messed one up, I often order a second one. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm, you know, put like the receipt in that bag or something. So I know um, that's the one that's brand new, right. unused. And you know. that's the same principle mm -hmm. as the extra bobbin case for the other machine. Yeah. So listen, Jesse, she goes, can I adopt you two to be with me when I need help? <laughs> well, I have to say I'm really spoiled because I do have Deborah here. Boy, she has helped me an awful lot too. But you can do this, Jesse. You know, oh, it's yeah. not rocket science. It's it's just experience and, yeah. and trial. You know, we you know, you just learn from others and you learn yeah. by doing and right. that's it. And you know, I I often try to calm down and think like Deborah. Deborah often says, just think, apply logic to this task. And so I try to do that. You know, I, I tend to fly off the handle. I get mad at the machine. The needle's wrong. Everything's wrong but me, for sure. And, you know, if I just relax a moment and think about how Deborah would approach it, it helps me be in better embroiderer. Yeah, let's see. Oh, Crystal Campbell, this is a great question. Can you leave the embroidery bobbin case in the machine and do regular sewing? Well, Eileen, that's a, more of a question for you because you know what? I never <laughs> take my machines, my embroidery unit off of my machines. Yeah. I don't. So um, you should change the bobbin. I can tell you that you will get better tension if you do change that bobbin case because I have found that my sewing is not a balanced tension, even if I'm using a sewing thread in my embroidery bobbin case. So I would suggest going to the trouble of changing out that bobbin case. Doesn't mean I always do it, but you know. Well, that's, that's <laughs> I'm sure, good advice. Yeah. I've regretted it. You know, I've pieced quilts and so forth, and you know, the seams aren't as tight as you'd like, and that's why. That is absolutely why. Now, mm -hmm. uh, Becky has a question there, mm -hmm. which is a good one. Do you have to clean out the tension area on the drop-in bobbin case, like we were showing yeah. on the one you removed? Right, mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. So I first approach that with that folded over bobbin, a pipe cleaner and rub all around the interior. And then I take a Q-tip with the smallest dot of machine oil and I rub that inside the bobbin case. And I also do that on the needle shaft, right? So I lower the needle and I remove any lint that's above the needle bar. 
And I know we're not supposed to oil our machines, most of our machines on the right. baby lock brother side. Right. And, and so I don't do that. I don't oil my machines, but I do clean those areas with a Q-tip and just the smallest drop of oil because that oil um, clings to all, any lint. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so that's why you need it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's see. My machine is the same problem. Never me, Shelly. Yeah, see, we sew. We're just alike. Yeah, it's never the machine. And Mary, you have both all of our Crafty classes. Thank Craftsy's classes. Thank you for doing that. We, we appreciate that. We love Craftsy. They do a great job. Don't they do a great job? Yeah. We had so much fun working with Craftsy. Okay, what do we got next? Okay, oh, next. Are yeah, you, yeah. There we go. Next, um, we are that, f following on with that uh, removable bobbin case from the cylinder arm machines. If you buy one, you know, online or something, uh, we, pref we prefer you buy from your dealer because you know you're going to get the right type. But if you buy one online, uh, they often have this black thing you see. They're called a backlash spring. That is only intended to slow down the spin of a metal bobbin. So unless you're using metal bobbins, which I know you're not. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, or I don't believe you are, uh, then you remove that. And especially it's important with the magnetic core bobbin. So you don't want that in there because it's not going to do its job. And you don't want it even with paper side bobbins because it pushes that paper bobbin out into the needle and you just don't want it in there. Now notice on this particular uh, bobbin, if you can point to it maybe Eileen uh, is it, oh, sure. will our pointer will our pointer oh no it's only on the slide sorry oh I'm I meant sorry <laughs> I oh the point. cursor I, yeah with the yeah. cursor I'm afraid um, to touch it um yeah the spring right, right up there, there near the top go up to the top see that little tiny yeah that that's called a pigtail it's oh. it's just a little um curved wire. Mm -hmm. And on certain commercial machines, that's used to, uh, to hold the bobbin thread up uh, more mm -hmm. to the needle. We don't want that on our Baby Lock Brother type machines. That's yeah. why they come without a pigtail. Now, you, you know, if you get one, break it off. Don't You don't <laughs> want it. Uh, I mean, because it interferes with your picker. Uh, so you don't want that on, right. on our machines. But ideally, you aren't going to get that if you buy the proper bobbin. Right case now these will fit and it's okay to use them if you have them you just got that little black backlash spring you just pop it right out just pop it out that's good to know okay lots of people do buy used machines they don't always come uh as they were right out of the box so right. good to know these tips for sure okay let's see do they have the s pre for um sharon we don't quite understand your maybe type that out again so we can help you um with that question Okay, so let's see. Oh, and of course, you got to keep that bobbin thread down below where it belongs. Right. So, you know, as I said earlier, we don't want uh, to give in to the problem by matching the bobbin thread to the top thread. You know, don't mm -hmm. go winding red to keep the red, you know, keep it all yeah. looking red. That's that's only masking a problem, right. a tension problem. Mm -hmm. And your stitches are not formed prettily mm -hmm. if the tension's not correct. So yeah. you want to work with your machine till you find that solution. And, you know, you want to use that um, bobbin case that's adjusted for, for embroidery bobbin thread that Eileen sh showed you earlier. And I'm going to say again, spun polyester bobbins are a big help with that particular issue. Absolutely. So don't be frustrated. Just experiment to get it right. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think we, you know, had a lot of uh, good conversation about yeah. bobbins today. Absolutely. Absolutely. I always learn from Deborah, and I'm sure many have of you have also. So Sharon restated her question okay. there. Pre-filled bobbins. Yes, we do. Yeah. And in fact, you know, that's really uh, next. We're going to show you what yeah. we have. Right. So, oh, where'd it go? Oh, oh sorry. So yeah, this uh, the special is all of these different bobbins come in the tube. So we have both the style A, which is class 15, and that's for your single needle flatbed machines, right? Right. And then the L is for your multi-needle or cylinder machine that um, 
that brother and baby lock make. They, they're just fabulous. They are just absolutely fabulous. And we also have the M's, right? Right. We have yeah. the M's and they come in a two. They are. Now, because they're so much larger, you get 36 in a tube, yeah. whereas the A's uh, come, well, let me think about that a minute. I think the A's are, they're 36. The the M's are 24, sorry. Yes. And the L's are 48. Yeah. So you're getting a lot of L's in a tube and right. uh, you're getting 12 more than, than yeah. you get with the A's. And mm -hmm. the prices are phenomenal. I mean, you're going to pay, um, well, you go to the website and check it out. We don't have the price on the special here because there's so many different variations. But of course, this week it's free shipping. And, you know, while you're there, you might still want to pick up the fall quartet because that's still on special today. So you could double dip and get both, you know, the special pricing on the fall metallic quartet or the exquisite quartet. That's also still on special and all the bobbin tubes. So, oh, I'm so excited. And that fall metallic, I just have to say one more time, regardless what time of year you use yeah. it. Yeah. That purple and the orange and the copper and the gold, they're all so rich that that people will use those all year long. They're not just for uh, they're not just for fall. They're really anytime they're gorgeous colors. So mm -hmm. I, I I've used it. I know Eileen, you love it. And of course, you know, we aren't just talking about these bobbins. Those are the ones we really use. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. All the time. Absolutely. Okay. Well, yeah. thanks for letting me talk about bobbins. Yeah. Well, you know, Becky Mums has one more question. She says, getting back to the proper tension. What if you stitch Fox and the tension seems wrong? How, how would you correct them in the drop in style? Well, you know, it, you can adjust that bobbin, that drop in style. And in fact, I wrote an article about that years ago in Designs and Machine Embroidery Magazine. Mm -hmm. And it's something that you might want to ask your, uh, tech at your local dealer to show you how to do. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty easy, but you want to get a comfort level with exactly what screw to tighten. You want to do the flathead screw, yep. not the, not the uh, Phillips type. And mm -hmm. you, and it's really uh, a matter of trial and error, like any bobbin tension yep. or tension adjustment is, right? So, yep. So there's a very fine screwdriver that is probably in the box that came with your machine. And that is to adjust this uh, screw here. And again, it's righty tighty. And you don't do an entire revolution. You start in quarter revolution increments and then put the bobbin back in there and stitch about 100 stitches, maybe 200. Really get a good look at it. Take it out and you know flip the work over so you can see the back it doesn't take that much adjustment you would be surprised and you would also be surprised that sometimes even on a a, a pretty new machine that yeah. might need a little tightening right it might it might don't be afraid of these things don't be afraid of these things okay so wendy uh hansen wants to know if i go to the website to buy bobbins will there be a list of machines that use l or m no there will not that information is in your machine manual and you should um, rely on the information from your manual don't don't rely on us and you know machine models change all the time brother comes out with new machines baby lock comes out everybody comes out with new machines and they add a number or a digit or so really rely but, on them but one of the great things about the bobbins from dime is that it says that size right on the bobbin it's yeah. on those paper sides it says mm -hmm. m or it says l but it, i have a feeling that that question is because she may have a multi-needle mm. and the only machine you know multi-needles use l and we mentioned that the Janome yeah. multi-needle uses m's but that's the only one i know of right. that uses m so i think you're yeah. you the know Melco might use an m. It, might. it might so check your check. manual mm -hmm. as eileen recommended and uh uh, Sandra Lee says, uh, has a comment, her Viking uses an L. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Mm -hmm. So let's see. And Wino had a good comment. She uh, marks where the screw was originally. Oh, Very, good. Very good. Brilliant. Very good. Brilliant. Yeah, like that. And then um, Beth wants to know, how do I know if I have a refillable bobbin? Well, um, I have two here that I can show you the difference. I, I, I hope we can see in, in this camera work. Let me move these aside. I'll put them on a stick so you can 
get a better look. Okay, so this on the on this side right here, see how narrow the interior of the of the bobbin cylinder is itself. Like in here, it's this plastic is very thin. The part that I'm gripping with the tweezers as compared to the part that I'm selecting on this. And so it's these are lightweight, very, very lightweight and brittle and meant for one use. This is a bit sturdier. And I'll bet, and, and I know I can't do this on camera, but I'll bet I could, if I tried, I could break off this top pretty easily. Yep, see, and that just breaks apart. So that is definitely not a refillable. That's a single use. As you look in your drawer and where all your bobbins are, you will be able to tell by eye, you know, what is a, a an empty, single use and what is an empty multi-use. You'll be able to tell. I, there's no way I could rip off the top or bottom of a multi-use Right, bobbin. and just compare with the ones that came with your machine. Yes, and you know, in your little packet of goodies that come in your machine is always a bag of bobbins. And I always keep I, one in that box that I never use. So I have it as a reference, so. Eileen, uh I don't know that we made it clear because Sharon Dayton has a an interesting question. Mm -hmm. She wants to know if we can use these bobbins with the embroidery machine. Yes, these yeah. are embroidery bobbins. Absolutely. That's all we're talking about yeah. here. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Stephanie Hardy, uh oh, oh, we have a Kingstar Virgin. She says she used her new metallic Kingstar for the first time, not one thread break. I hope that doesn't bother you, Stephanie, because that's always going to continue. Yeah, right. <laughs> get used to that. Get your, my points flipping around. There we go. Okay, got to get it on straight, right? And let's see. Uh, Betty Turner, you love the pre-wounds. Me too. They're just awesome. Just awesome. And let's see. All right. So remember, when you go to the website, you're going to have to select. You're going to refer to your machine manual to know which one. Um, you know, L or A that you're, or M and you're going to need for your machine. Right. 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 Yeah. And, and, you know, those magnetic, if you do have a multi-needle or single needle uh, machine that uses L's, mm -hmm. go ahead and give those magnetic core yeah. a try. You're, you know, a lot of technicians that work for dealers, maybe mm -hmm. the technician at your dealer, actually recommends the magnetic yeah. core. They're very popular among yeah. the techs because they really give a consistent performance. Absolutely. And there's no wobble. You right. Know, that's the whole deal. Chris Yost, look at this request. We need a variegated king star. <laughs> Woo! Oh, man. How many years yeah. will that take? Oh, wow. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that that's is. A, that is, that well, would be beautiful, but yeah. I don't know. You know, yeah. <coughs> the, we'll ask. We'll ask. Yeah. Right. We'll never know what's possible. Never know what's possible. Absolutely. Well, you know what? What's coming up? I think I do. There and I go. know that's what a lot of your followers are here for today. Yes, we are going to sh do the November reveal of the small town charm. And, you know, all throughout the year, you, oh, you know, you come to this between friends episode and you share your thoughts and your wishes and so forth. So this one is one that has stuck out over and over. And that is for um, our, well, let me go through. So those of you who are new, the Small Town Charm is a series of free designs that we have offered to you every month. They are released on the last Thursday of the month. January was the quilt shop, February the bakery, March a dress shop, and April was Blooms, a flower shop. May, we went outside for a two-story outdoor cafe, and in June was the town hall. In July, we found a uh, home of the giant cone, which was scoops, and August was the gazebo. You'll notice some of these are embellished and some are really kind of plain. And that's because we hope that you use your own creativity to embellish them and make them your own. September was the book nook and October was a haunted house. Very, very plain. But let's take a look at some of your small, small town charms. We just have two this month. So look at Seth Sweets. She used a panel for the background. So look at the image on the right. That, that happy Halloween with the big pumpkin, that's a panel, that, you know, a fabric panel. And then she just put her haunted house right on top of it. I love it. Great placement of the uh, 
cat weather vane right there on the stem. Oh, you had a lot of fun with that, Seth. You did a really great job. She stitched her windows in glow in the dark thread. And that's the image that you see there on the left in that green. So what looks like white in the daytime um, illuminates as green in the dark. Isn't that fun? Oh, I love that. Really, that's great. Okay. And then this is a very interesting um, contribution from a friend of mine. So let's learn a little bit just for a moment about Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga is uh, from... Slavic folklore, and she is a witch from, you know, that is embraced by Russians, Ukrainians, Poles, Czechs, Slavics, Croats, and, and Bosnians. And she lives in a wooden hut in the woods that's lit by skulls with blazing eyes. And the hut stands on chicken legs. See the chicken legs where that red arrow is? And quite often, the hut walks around the forest, kind of like a monstrous farmyard bird. And Baba Yaga herself is often described as a de deformed, scraggly old woman with bony legs, a crooked nose, long teeth, and she is often seen flying about in mortar that she's in a mortar that she steers with a pestle, as you can see right there in that image. Well, my good friend Gloria Cardoza did this. How fun is that? So she created chicken legs and she's got the, the farmland and some, you know, like uh, land underneath of it uh, terror, you know, in that brown fabric. And then she has digitized the grass. She's digitized that walking path to the house. She added some cool um, stitching on the roofs and also on the uh, haunted house itself. And she also created Baba Yaga in her uh, pestle and, and motor that motor that she's uh, flying around in. Isn't that fun? She did a really great job. She's got a moon up in the sky and her background fabric is wild, wild. And Kirsten Swanson, you say you love Baba Yaga from a great Yaga book that your daughter read to you. Isn't that nice? Isn't that awesome? I know. Great job, Gloria really beautiful. Okay, so for November, our small town charm reveal is the pet store supply. Because I know many of you have pets, they're so dear to um, your heart, they're members of your family. And I was um, advised by one of my team members who said, you know, be careful about uh, a, you know, a store where you would actually go buy a puppy and so forth, because many of them today are puppy mills. We don't want to do that, but we know that you loved your you love your pampered pets. So in the um, in the embroidery design, you're going to find dog houses, pet carriers, bird cages and then uh, bags of, of pet food. And on the bottom is like shampoos, that kind of thing. So I hope that you have a lot of fun stitching the pampered pets. I hope that you um, add some of your own embellishments to it. I can't wait to see what you're gonna do. I know that many of you have miniature pets that you have stitched on other small town charms. So can't wait to see what you're gonna do. And, you know, this Saturday, Sue Brown, Sue S. Brown at OML Embroidery will be hosting a sew along doing the uh, pet supply store. So I hope that you'll go over to Facebook and YouTube and join her there. You can catch her at OML Embroidery. Just Google that. And she'll come right up and you can jump in and join the fun. But I had an awful lot of fun designing that. Oh, and just so you know, on the 7 by 12, there are door handles. So it's best not to stitch them in black. So you can see them, <laughs> right? Can't bat a thousand. Okay. Well, thanks so much, everybody. Come on in, Deborah Jones. Say goodbye. Thank you for joining me. It was really fun today. It was. It was yeah. fun, you know, because there's no more fun than talking about what makes our embroidery perfect. Absolutely. Happy Halloween, everyone. See you next week.